But um, I host a series of training seminars here in the Atlanta market on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, for Facebook, and Foursquare. So clearly LinkedIn and Twitter is what we'll be talking about today. And you have more information about those seminars there in front of you. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, content generation. So I always like to kind of start off a little bit with definitions to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page. So we'll be looking at um, some definitions for some specific terms very briefly, because I know that you all probably are already familiar with them. And then we'll look at the difference between content generation, curation, and aggregation. Uh, and then we'll look at content generation as it applies specifically to LinkedIn. And we'll be looking at the LinkedIn personal profiles, LinkedIn groups, and LinkedIn company pages, how you can use content and integrate content into those different areas, and also pull content from some of those areas. And then we'll look at the Twitter content generation as well. So I always like to start kind of to make sure that we're all on the same page, I guess, with some basic definitions. So social media, clearly everyone in this room knows what social media is. Um, this is how I like to define social media. It's basically a group of tools that enable people to create and share digital content while establishing and cultivating relationships. And relationships really is what it's about. So when you look at social media, it's not just about inundating people with your content, but giving them content that will facilitate relationship building or tweeting, retweeting them, or connecting with them on LinkedIn and supporting them on LinkedIn, refer giving them referrals, doing different things that will actually um, encourage relationship building. So it's all about connecting with people, communicating, sharing, and growing. SEO is another term that I'll use a lot in today's presentation. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it, but search engine optimization or SEO is essentially the art of using keywords to improve your results in Google, Yahoo, Bing, and any search engine. So it's a keyword driven, so it's kind of using your keywords and your content that you're creating to make sure that that content is pushed out onto Google, Yahoo, and Bing. A couple of different um, definitions, just to make sure that we're all kind of clear about what we'll be talking about today. Content generation um, is kind of interesting to me, actually. There's, there's two different kind of ways to look at content generation. Um, I kind of like about um, Elena Tapia. She kind of looks at content generation more from the freelance perspective. So basically using uh, or looking at content generation as a specific biz tech form of freelance writing. So that's kind of where she's looking at content generation is still kind of the human element. So using people to generate that content. Um, what is .com probably has the definition that's a little bit more familiar um, to all of us here. When we hear content generation, we may think of more of the automated um, type of content generation. So what is looks at content generation software, which is what we're also um, familiar with, it, as a type of computer program that produces articles, summaries, and other content for publication. So it's kind of more the, the automated um, computer aspect of that, or, or generated aspect of that. And then we've got content curation. And content curation, according to curation services, is the act of finding, organizing, and sharing the best and most relevant content on a particular subject online. So you can talk about anything that relates to your industry, any issue that might be of interest to your, uh, your particular audience. It's basically going through and finding the best content for your audience. So that's content curation. And then content aggregation. Um, this is basically either an individual or an organization that gathers web content from different online sources and uses that for reuse or resale. So I wanted to kind of go through some of those definitions because those are some of the terms that I'll be using throughout the presentation. So hopefully we'll all be on the same page. Also wanna take a break to note that um, here you'll see my Twitter handles down here, Global Marcoms, K Quattlebaum, and also the hashtag for the summit today. If you have any questions as we go along throughout the presentation, please tweet those to me. So just mention either K Quattlebaum or mention Global Marcoms in your tweet, and you can uh, tweet that question over to me. We'll try to do some questions at the end, but if we don't have time, that will at least allow me to be able to follow up with you kind of um, after, after the session. So make sure that you stay involved there. And I'm also going to be tweeting out some of the information that I'm sharing here kind of live as we go through the session presentation. So I think that there's a big debate right now about content. 
It's basically the, the, the debate between generated content, so either, you know, kind of the freelance side or, or specifically the software side of things for generating content or the created content, which is what probably a lot of us in here do. How many of you, by the way, work in marketing? Most, okay, okay. So, um, so a lot of us are familiar then with generating or creating the content. That's typically what we would do. Um, so there's kind of a, a, a positive, I guess, and a negative for content generation software. Content generation software can be great. It can definitely save you time, um, but you do need to be really careful about the quality. Um, there is one very sophisticated content generation tool that I felt really merited mentioning, and that's um, the narrative science. This is probably one of the most sophisticated tools. And if you go to that source there, you'll get the copy of this presentation through Digital Summit after the conference. But if you go to that source and look at that What Is article, that will actually show you kind of the, an example of what narrative science can do. It's great in terms of taking statistical data, specifically things like sporting data, and taking that information and generating an article almost instantaneously um, live as, as you're going through the sporting event. So it's really great in terms of sports. It's also good for articles that are really heavy based on um, kind of stats and figures, that kind of thing. Um, but some software, uh, the content generation software is not so great. Um, and we're all familiar with it. We've seen kind of those blogs or <coughs> sites that are just stuffed with a whole bunch of generated content that really doesn't add value, that doesn't make any sense um, when you read it. I mean, you know, it clearly, it was written by someone who had no understanding of the English language, right? It just doesn't flow, it doesn't make any sense. So you have to kind of really sit there and, and really concentrate on it to, to try to interpret what the machine is trying to tell you and it's pretty evident that it's been generated by a computer. So um, that's kind of my take. Obviously, I am a little biased, I'm a little traditional, so I tend towards creating the content rather than using um, complete generation tools to generate the content. There are some tools though that I will share with you that I think kind of provide a happy medium. But uh, I did want to make one more point, and that is about the latest updates that Google has put out. It really harshly penalizes kind of the spammy SEO-only sites, so those sites that use purely um, content generation software to generate their content. They're really being penalized. Um, the most recent Panda update showed a really strong shift back towards content for people and not at people, according to HubSpot's Corey Aridan. And then... Pamela Vaughn, also from HubSpot, talked about creating remarkable content that's written for your audience first and then search engines next. So I think in the last couple of years when we look at content, a lot of it kind of was created in a way for trying to get on that page one of Google, right? So it was really written in, in terms of thinking about the search engine or thinking about SEO. But I think that you'll find the, the most recent shift is shifting back towards content that is really good and completely relates to your audience. And that's incredibly important. Right now, people are inundated with content. There's content everywhere. I mean, I even sometimes, I've, I've wondered, that's probably why I have ADD, because there's so much content, there's so much information out there, sometimes I feel like there's smoke coming out of my ears. So um, there's a lot of information. You really need to try to figure out how to speak out amongst that, that crowd of content that everybody is um, being cluttered with. So. One of the ways to do that is to really make sure that your content really pops. So a couple of tools that I wanted to um, mention to you, and I've actually tweeted these out, so if you're following me at Global Marcoms or Kate Quattlebaum, then you'll see these tools and you can check them out yourselves. But a um, couple of really cool tools for content curation. How many of you are already using Hootsuite, by the way? Tweet deck? Something like that. Okay. So I still like Hootsuite for a content curation system. Hootsuite basically allows you to set up custom keyword searches and advanced search streams so that you can monitor what people are tweeting about in real time. So it's a great tool to kind of stay in touch with what's going on and specifically um, terms that relate to you and your industry. It's also good for following lists. So if you have identified industry experts that you want to follow and in, in industry um, experts that provide you great sources of content, then you can create lists for those individuals, Twitter lists, and follow them, um, follow those lists on Hootsuite. Also, RSS readers, this is another um, format, I guess, that's very customized. So basically, you can go out, identify the top websites, the top blogs, the top 
resources for content online that you like to follow and share as a professional and feed those into your RSS feeder and then, or RSS reader and then just monitor that feed and go through and um, hand pick, cherry pick the content that you think will be most important to your audience. Stuff to tweet.com and Populars, these are two really similar sites, but they cover content from top to bottom. So basically, um, they aggregate content from the best news sources, from the top blog sources, and also um, the top photos that are being shared on social media, the top videos that are being watched on YouTube. So those two sites are very similar. Um, for me, Populars actually is a little bit more organized, I think, um, in terms of topics. Um, but both sites are really good areas to look for content that you can share. How many of you are already familiar with those sites and using those sites? Just curious. Oh, score. Okay. I wanted to have at least something that you didn't know. So good. Um, so Alltop is another neat site, alltop.com. Alltop is basically aggregated blog and news content. It's all the top sites. That's where Alltop com comes from. So Alltop will take all the top um, latest updates and posts from websites, from blogs, and put that into one place so that you don't have to look all over the internet for kind of what's hot, basically. And one thing that I think is interesting in all top, if you look at their about section and they talk about what they do, um, it's kind of like a search engine in that it's searching the web, but typically when you go to a search engine, you would go in and you know what you're looking for. So if you want to learn about content generation, you go in and you search for content generation because that's what you're going out to look for. But you, if you don't know what's hot, you don't know what's happening, you don't know what is going on in the industry, you don't know that the latest thing is the, the Google self-driven car, um, you know, getting its own driver's license, which is crazy but interesting nonetheless. But, you know, you may not be familiar with that. You're not going out there to look for that. Well, all top will actually take that, that article recognize that it's really hot, that people are really talking about that, and it will put that in front of you. So instead of going out and looking for information, the information is kind of finding you through that, web, that website. And then Technorati is another site that basically looks at blogs. It's a way to look at, I mean, there's a, there are a lot of blogs out there, right? Millions and millions of blogs. So it's hard sometimes to kind of weed out the really good blogs from the average blogs from the really junk blogs. So Technorati kind of does that for you by looking at the top 100 blogs and looking at um, the top blogs for, for specific industries and topics as well. And then one um, that, two sites actually, that I'd like to mention in terms of content automation. Um, Social Oomph, anybody using Social Oomph out there, a couple? Okay. Social Oomph is actually kind of one of the older sites in terms of social media um, automation and some of the things that it provides. It provides a lot of things that are similar to Hootsuite in terms of scheduling tweets, scheduling information for, you know, blogs, that kind of thing. I still prefer Hootsuite for that. But one thing that Social Oomph does do is it provides a level of automation. So basically, it allows you to auto-follow new followers, and you have the option to have a three-day delay on that, because if anybody has ever looked at their followers on Twitter, they're not always people that you want to follow, right? So you have a few that kind of slip in there from time to time. So um, you can actually have like a three-day delay there where it gives you some time to go in and kind of monitor who you're following. But it will auto-follow new followers, and it will automatically send a direct message to your new followers as well. So that's kind of a level of automation. Now, I will say this. The auto-direct message, that's a huge area of debate. I think that if you had 100 people um, and you asked them about that response, you'd probably have somehow 100 different responses as to whether or not they think that you should auto-respond to your, um, your followers with an auto-direct message. But I found some success in it. I typically, for my personal account, will auto-respond to people and will invite them to connect with me on LinkedIn. So that's, that's how I use that to my advantage. And then Tweet Adder, and actually it was funny, and I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Brian. Brian and I were talking about um, Twitter earlier, and he said, yeah, I use this great tool, and it's Tweet Adder, and I was like, you don't say it. So Tweet Adder is a pretty neat tool. Anybody heard of that? For me, that was a less known tool, so I saw a couple hands. But Tweet Adder is um, cloud software, basically, that allows you to go in and provide some level of automation and some level of content generation. Basically, the way that I look at Tweet Adder, it, it has a whole ton of features, but um, in terms of what we're talking about today, um, for the content automation, basically, what you can do with Tweet Adder 
is take kind of your core message. So like your core um, message about yourself, or about your company, and create variations of that with the system. So in my case, I could say Global Marcoms offers or provides um, social media training courses, classes, seminars, uh, workshops in Atlanta, Georgia, Kennesaw, Marietta, and put those options in brackets basically, and Tweet Adder will take all those different combinations and auto tweet those out at my schedule. So I can choose to schedule that out maybe like once a week. I can remind people that this is what I do. Um, you could do it once a day, but again, there's kind of that shift away from that content thrown at people and really content that's providing value. So um, you don't want to inundate people with that kind of messaging where it's just, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is what I do. What can you do for them? That's what you need to be answering with your, with your social media content. So LinkedIn, now this is kind of a give me question and I'm, I'm just seeing if all of you are paying attention. So speci specifically those of you in the back as you're checking email, go ahead and look up. Um, we wanna ask you if you have a LinkedIn account. Yay, see, you can pretty much participate, right? So all of you have a LinkedIn account pretty much, which is to be expected. Um, how many of you would consider yourselves to be avid LinkedIn users? Like you use the heck out of the system. I mean, you know how to use the system. Okay. And how many of you would consider yourselves to be open networkers? You connect to anybody, you're open networkers. Okay. Thank you for that. That gives me a little bit of an idea that you're still awake uh, and also allows me to know a little bit about your usage of LinkedIn. So thanks for participating there. So LinkedIn, I have to admit, this is like my baby tool. Um, I love LinkedIn. It is my favorite tool. I've been using it for the longest. And I happen to work in B2B uh, mostly, so LinkedIn for me is a great tool in targeting other businesses. And speaking of that, how many of you guys work in business to business? You target other businesses. Okay, then this is your tool. So LinkedIn overall stats, basically LinkedIn has 150 million users in 200 countries. Now 150 million users may not sound so great. Basically 150 million users when you look at um, Facebook at 850 and then you've got um, Twitter at twice as much at 300. 